I would like to present the question, if the euro collapses, is it Germany's fault? After researching this question, I will give several examples of why it is believed that Germany is indeed at fault if the euro was to collapse. To begin with, I will share a few statistics about the status of the euro back in 2011. On the website, The Economic Collapse, Michael, a contributor to the site, wrote an article entitled, The Collapse of the Euro, The Death of the Euro, and the End of the Euro. He states, the euro was a doomed project from the start. Now we are starting to see the end game play out. Today, the euro fell to an 11-month low against the U.S. dollar, and I write this, the U.S. and euro is at 1.2983. Back in July, the euro USD was over 1.45. As panic has swept the financial markets, the euro has lost more than 3% over the past three days. But this is just the beginning. When the euro drops below 1.20, analysts will talk about the collapse of the euro. When the euro falls toward parity with the dollar, headlines around the world will scream about the death of the euro. But when the European financial system finally collapses, we may very well actually see the end of the euro. Yes, it actually could happen. The eurozone, as it is currently constructed, simply does not work. You just can't take 17 different nations that have 17 different fiscal policies, 17 different tax policies, and 17 different economic agendas and cram them all into one single currency and expect the thing to work. The euro is a deemed, doomed currency, and if a big nation like Germany decides to walk away at some point, the game is over for the euro. I really like this explanation, and it makes sense to me um, when he explained how difficult it would be for 17 different nations, 17 different fiscal policies, tax policies, economic agendas, to work after cramming together to make one single currency. George Soros a billionaire investor did an interview with Spiegel Online International about the euro crisis. His position is that the Germans are at fault for the possible collapse of the euro. He explained several reasons why. It would be very costly of a eurozone exit in terms of employment and economic activity, both of which are really real. Because of this the case, Germany will always do the minimum to preserve the euro. Doing the minimum, though, will perpetuate the situation where the debtor countries in Europe have to pay tremendous premiums to refinance their debt. The result will be Europe in which Germany is seen as an imperial power that will not be loved and admired by the rest of Europe but hated and resisted because it will be perceived as, as an oppressive power. Spiegel Online asks, why should Germ Germany carry all the blame? After all, other Europe nations shied away from necessary structural reforms and lived beyond their means. Soros replied, there's no doubt that the countries that now have a very large debt have not introduced the kind of structural reforms that Germany did and are therefore at a big disadvantage. But the problem is that this disadvantage is becoming even more pronounced through the punitive policies in place now. Italy currently has to spend 6% of its GDP every year just to stay even with Germany because it has to pay so much to refinance their debt. There is no way with that handicap that Italy can choose the competitiveness gap with Germany. Spiegel Online says, once again, how is that Germany's fault? This is the joint, Soros says, this is the joint responsibility of everyone who is involved in the introduction of the euro without understanding the consequences. When the euro was introduced, the regulators allowed banks to buy unlimited amounts of government bonds without setting aside any equity capital. And the European Central Bank discounted all government bonds on equal terms. So commercial banks found it advantageous to accumulate the bonds of the weak countries to earn a few extra basis points. On a blog called Reuters, Pedro de Costa explained his view of why he believes that Germany is indeed will be at fault if the euro collapses. He states, the reigning narrative of Europe's financial turmoil is that prolific 
European states, agglomerated all too offensively by a swine reference acronym, are forcing the continent's wealthy, prudent northern countries to come to their rescue. Not so, according to two policy experts who spoke this week at a conference on the Eurozone crisis at the University of Austin's Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs. They argue that labor reforms in Germany prevented the wages of manufacturing workers from rising after monetary union has been completed, making the country more competitive at the expense of its southern peers. George Bibbo, a professor of economics at Skidmore College, gives his view of events. Germany's wage trends have been the most important cause of the Eurozone crisis. Those wage trends created an asymmetric shock that destabilized Europe. This hollowing rest of the rest, the hollowing out of the rest of Europe at the expense of Germany's workers and to the benefit of its prospering corporate sector only lasted so long because of the insatiable debt fuel demand of the American consumer. Bibble said, some market analysts have argued that the euro itself is a backdoor stimulus for Germany because monetary union has kept the common currency much lower than the Deutschmark would be if Germany's trade surpluses had been accumulated outside the FML. I'm not going to pretend that I understand all of this information, but I believe that there are many clear and reasonable and accurate facts that support and believe that Germany would indeed be the cause of the failure of the euro. Thank you.